everybody, I, uh, you know, I really don't like talking about Donald Trump because I really don't like the guy. So since I don't like the guy, I don't really like making videos about him. But uh, given all the stuff that he says and given his personality and who he really is, I always feel obligated to do something, to say something, to produce some kind of ad content to offset all the stuff that he says and to really kind of hopefully wake people up about who Donald Trump really is. But one of the things that really I find hard to believe is Donald Trump gets his support from a lot of people that are middle class working people, mostly in the Midwest, and he gains his support by connecting with these people. Now how Donald Trump, a rich white guy from New York that's never done a day's worth of physical labor in his life, connects with all these middle class hardworking uh, people in, uh, in the central states. I, I, I've never quite understood that. And the only way he's able to connect with them, he can't connect with them in, in any kind of life experience or any kind of meaningful way of connecting with these people. He connects with them by telling them what they want to hear. And that's all he does. He's a populist. He says what people want to hear. And he's connected with these people because these people have a lot of problems with the way the country's being run or been run. So what he does is he blames them for everything and then blames the people that have presented it to him, the, the, the uh, news media, um, as the enemy because they've, they've been complicit in this ruining of the United States and he connects with these people in this way. And that's where Trump gets his strength, where he gets his power. He doesn't connect with these people. He never will connect with these people. He doesn't, ever, he's never lived like that. He never will live like that. And he has no idea what it's like. But still, these people support him. And I'm gonna give you one example how he doesn't understand this. Since Trump's been elected president, well, actually before, but since he's been elected president, one, one of the areas that he's really hurting and will continue to hurt is, is the farmers. I used to be a farmer. I connect with a farmer because I used to be a farmer. Um, Trump is talking about cutting subsidies, farm subsidies. Farm subsidies have been around since the late, late 1980s, the PIC program and all that stuff. I was involved with that kind of stuff. It does help the farmer stay in business. A lot of these farmers get a lot of subsidies, crop insurance, all that stuff helps. Trump's looking at cutting all that out. Not only that, commodity prices are probably at historic lows right now. And Trump is doing nothing to help out the commodity prices. He's basically run around and taking this out of all these trade agreements, isolated the United States, so other countries don't want to trade with us because of all the, uh, the rhetoric and all the bullshit that he said about how the United States is always being taken advantage of on these, on these agreements. So now you've got an isolated market you got a commodity that needs to be traded around the world for it to have value, and you got Trump running around dogging all the rest of the world, um, all the rest of the world, and dogging them to the point where they don't want to, you know, purchase American commodities anymore because of his rhetoric and the things that he says. So here's a group of people I'm sure supported Donald Trump in overwhelming numbers, uh, and he's actually hurting them very badly right now hurting him really badly. Trump is destroying the farm economy. And it probably doesn't look like anything's gonna happen very quickly as far as that's concerned. I think corn prices are at unbelievable lows. Soybeans, wheat, uh, I think feeder cattle. They're all down, everything's down. It's been down for a while. It continues to go down. And Trump doesn't even address it. The only way he addresses it is by cutting the subsidies. It kind of helps support some of the prices. So Trump, here he is. He hasn't connected with these people. He doesn't understand what the issues are. He doesn't understand what the problem is. He just comes in and says some blanket statement about, oh, we're going to bring back the jobs. We're going to get them back from China. We're going to we're, we're, we're going to do away with all these bad trade agreements. Uh, we're, 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 going to, we're going to make America great again. And on top of that, all these people out here that are dishonest, you, mean, you see all these people, you know, all this news media, fake news, it's all dishonest. He says what you want to hear, wake up people. The guy is just bullshit. He sits there and bullshits you all day long. And you got people ready to fight for this guy. If anything, I think that people should be trying to figure out how to get rid of him, not how to fight for him. He's a menace. 
You know, he's, you don't have to listen to five minutes of this guy to know that he's a bullshit con artist. You don't have to listen to five minutes of him to figure that out. Just listen to him. Just listen to what he says. Listen to the way he says it. Listen to the aggression that he says things. The way he did when he did the press conference the other day, he didn't talk to people. He talked down to people. He didn't sit there and go, you know, um, with Joe Aparo. He didn't sit there and go, you know what? This is an interesting case. We're going to take a look at it. No, he's, he's like the guy in that Nazi film, um, Schindler's List, with the wooden Nazi guy that's shooting people from the... Um, from the balcony and he goes, I'll pardon people. I'm going to pardon people. That's the way Trump is. He's like the Nazi that's on the balcony looking down on the group in, in, the, in, the, in the slave labor camp going, I'm going to pardon people. I'm going to pardon Joe Aparo. I'm going to pardon this person. I'm going to pardon that people. He's a dictator thug. That's what he is. He's a dictator. He's not somebody that wants to represent a, the you know, United States of America, everybody from one end to the other. He tells you what he wants to hear and he dictates to the rest. And that's what he does. He dictates and tells you that these people are, are mean or these people are bad or these people are dishonest. That's more of a dictator than it is somebody that's trying to run a country. Anyway, wake up about this guy. He's just nothing but a fraud.